All right, in this video, I'm going to do my best to talk about rights and visibility in GMForge. And rights and visibility in GMForge basically means what your players can see and what they can't. So understanding them is important for controlling your game. So the first thing you're going to want to know is that when a person creates an asset, they are automatically assigned the owner rights. If there is a GM in the game, the GM is also assigned owner rights alongside that player. Each asset in GM Forge has individual rights, meaning you can give a person, a single person or a group of people, separate rights in different levels of access. So the, four, the five levels of access are deny, which denies them any access to that, that uh, asset, visible, which allows them to see in a read-only mode the asset and its contents, writes, which basically allows a person to write to the asset and change the asset, but they're not allowed to duplicate or delete it, and owner, which basically allows them to just duplicate, delete it, and do anything else they want to do to it. Default access will default to the game systems for determining whether a person has access or not. For most cases, this means they won't have access to a asset, but in some cases when you're playing with assistant masters or another game master in the same session, default access will determine what these people can use. Largely, we'll be ignoring it for this video, but essentially just treat it as the same thing as deny. So, you can change the asset rights <laughs> of anything you have owner or rights access to. Meaning that if you have rights, you can give somebody else rights. If you have owner access, you can give other people uh, access. This likely will be changed to owner only, but for now, that's the behavior. Uh, so in the case that a person has owner rights or rights, that player, can then impersonate the asset as if they were the, as if they were them. So in this case, my player has owner rights to the player character. So therefore, therefore they can become the player character. This means that whenever they want to place their piece on the board and that piece has not been placed, meaning the player character is absent from the map, they can simply right click and hit create piece and place their piece on any board. You as the GM always have the option to delete it uh, or just tell your player not to create a piece. But it helps in the cases where a person doesn't have a piece on the map and the GM is too busy doing other things. So when a player character's piece is on the board, if they have owner rights or if they have rights to that piece, they are allowed to move that piece. If they have visible rights to the piece, then they are only allowed to see what that piece sees and they cannot move or interact with it otherwise. This means that if you have NPCs that your players are going along with, giving them visible rights allows them to access their character sheets and also see what those characters see in the same game board. This is important for dynamic lighting, which I'll demonstrate right now. So on this board, I'm going to put down both my player characters and enable dynamic lighting. I'm going to draw a wall between them. And me as the GM have access to both this character and this character so I can see the entire board. However, my player character only has visible rights to his character. So he only can see what his character sees he has to move to go see the other character. However, if I was to change this and give my player character rights to the NPC, they will automatically be able to see what that NPC sees, allowing them to share their vision with accompanying NPCs or allies. However you want to use it, it's up to you. Now, a little thing to know 
is that you can assign default rights in certain cases. For most cases, assets really shouldn't have default rights. It's only here in case you want to do a couple of things, but it has very few practical uses. GM only, players, and custom macro. We won't talk about the custom macro much, but essentially this is your entry point for writing macros that determine if a player can see or not see this particular object, asset, or layer. What I mean by that is that you'll be able to do things like filter if a player is a hunter class, or if a player has the tracking skill. You'll be able to filter assets and layers so that they can see certain things that other players won't be able to. But that's a whole tutorial within itself and we're gonna largely ignore it for this. So not only can assets have security, but tabs can have security as well. Here you'll notice if I go to the tab visibility, I can change who has access to the tab. The difference with default access for tabs is that by default, a tab is visible to everybody, meaning you can, get, you can see it as soon as the tab is created. If you ever need to add a, a sneaky tab or a sneaky map, you can simply right click to the asset and then go to use map GM only. So in addition, when, or actually before I move on, let me just assign a tab to GM only. What this does is it grays out the tab. Since I'm a GM, I can see the tab without any issues, but my player no longer sees the tab. And every time they join, they won't be able to see that tab. If I want to undo this change, I simply go back to tab visibility and I go to either players or default settings, both of which are equivalent. So in that case, let's move on to the last place you're gonna see security in the resource page. So on the resource page, you can have a ton of resources, some GM related, some player related, but in the case of having some GM related material that you don't want your players to see, you have, the, you have the ability to change the visibility to it. So same way as it works with tabs, you have GM only, players, and default setting. Or you can optionally give individual access to the tabs, or to the categories, my apologies. This makes it pretty easy to restrict content that you don't want players to see or content you want to be unavailable to some players. Um, it's pretty much all on you on how you want to use it though. That wraps up what I wanted to cover in this video. I'll be doing more in the future, but until then, like, comment, subscribe, and suggest something for the next video.